Example 5.2, light is incident at angle theta one on a boundary between two transparent mediums. Some of the light travels down through the next three layers of transparent materials, while some of it reflects upward and then escapes into the air. Draw an accurate ray diagram and interpret the refractions. That is, do they either bend away or towards the normal and why? And finally, B, determine the values of theta five and theta four. So here's what we know. A light ray bends according to to the index of refraction. So when I look at this thing, index of refractions, refractions between um, two adjacent mediums, optical mediums. So I know here if that if n1 is less than n2, then the ray bends toward the normal. And if it's the opposite way, then the ray bends away from the normal. So let's put in the image of this and start to look at this guy. So here is our situation right here. So one of the things that's important to realize, note that all of the normals are going to be vertical. So they have the same orientation. So we could then say that all normals are vertical. And therefore, have the same orientation. There's a lot of benefits to having that. So one of the things that we're going to see here is that we need to look at the situations where I have an index of refraction, where the second index of refraction is larger than the incident one, then we expect it's, it bends toward, towards the normal. So let's look at the first one. So if I look at the first one right here, we can see here is that the normal is vertical. So if I look at this normal right here, it's a vertical normal like this here. Now let's follow the ray. So if I follow the ray incident between one and two, then my ray, my unrefracted ray, should be going like this. But look what actually happens to the to the ray. The ray actually gets bent down. Right? It gets bent down. So what you're seeing here is that this ray bends towards the normal. Or again, this is our normal right there. So now note that there is another normal right here. So I'm not going to draw it the vertical. I'm only going to draw it just the, not above, but just below here. So look at that normal. So now let's look at the green ray. 
So if I look at the green ray coming in, what you're going to see here is that this guy's going to want to do what? It really wants to continue to go, you know, in the same unrefracted direction. But what you're finding here is that what did the ray actually do? It actually got bent away from the normal. So now if I draw this guy blue here, you can see here is that this ray, instead of going towards the black normal, it moves away from the normal. So this goes away from the normal. And then I can do the exact same thing with the next one here. Look at the black, the black normal down. And you could see here that this ray here, down here, let's draw this just a different color. Let's make this one purple here. You could see that this guy from the blue, it moves towards the normal. And that's exactly what we expect, right? In this case, we saw that N1 was smaller than N2, so it has to bend towards. And then what you're seeing is that you see N2 is greater than N3, so therefore it has to bend away, right? It bends away from the normal. And then finally, if I compare three and four, you could see that N3 is smaller than N4, so therefore it bends towards the normal. So our drawings definitely match up here. So now what we wanna do here is that we wanna go in and we wanna calculate theta five and theta four. So let's go do that. So now we're going to calculate theta 5. So what I did here is that I cropped the image so that it looks like this. So now let's look at this thing here. So one of the things that we know is we know that this angle right here is 40.1 degrees. That's what's given in the problem. So now let's look what happens. There is light that gets refracted, but a portion also gets reflected. So when you're looking at this thing, here's what you should be seeing. What you should be seeing here is that there is a reflected ray that goes like this. It goes like this, and I'm drawing it in green. Now, what you're seeing here is that you're seeing this. According to the law of reflection, this angle here should be exactly the same as theta 1. So that should be 40.1 40 degrees. And when you're looking at this guy, if I follow my normal here, if that angle theta 1 is here, then that means that this angle must be theta one as well. So what you're seeing here is that uh, using basic geometry, we conclude that the incident angle between mediums N1 and N air is theta one, which is 40.1 degrees. Okay. So now if I look at this thing, look what happens. Light is going from what? It's going from a higher index to a lower index so you see that the ray is doing what? It's bending away as expected. So now we got to calculate that angle theta, five. So now what I'm doing here is that the second thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to apply 
Snell's law of refraction to calculate theta five. So then it says that N one sine of theta one should be N of air sine of theta five. So then I'm gonna now solve for theta five. And if I do that, I'm gonna get that the sine in, so if I take both of these, if I take the sine inverse, that means I'm gonna get N one sine of theta one divided into N air, I have to compute that term. So now if I plug in my terms, we know that N1 is 1.3 as it shows, shows from the image. And we know that the index of refraction of air is one. So then this will give me sine inverse of 1.30 sine of 40.1 divided by 1.0, and then this gives me an angle of 56.9 degrees, and that is theta five. So now the next thing that we gotta do is that we gotta go calculate theta four. So now what we're doing here is that we wanna calculate Theta four. So here we go. So here's my image. Now here's what here's what's really really special about these vertical uh, normals being all the same. Since all the normals. have the same vertical orientations, we can write Snell's law continuously through each crossing of optical boundaries. And what I mean by this is that I really mean this here, is that look at the interaction between one and two. Well, if I look at Snell's law, it should be sine of one, so it should be N1 sine of one. So it's gonna be N2 sine of theta two. So what you're seeing here is that here's what's really, really interesting here. Now, if I, so this is between boundary one and two. But now note that, that the, Refraction angle now becomes the incident angle for boundary two and three. So then that very same sine of theta two then tells me that N2 sine of theta two is also the incident angle between N3 and N2. And so now I can re now repeat the whole process. So if I repeat the whole process that I said that now note that the refraction now becomes the incident angle between boundaries uh, three 
and four. So now I can then come in and write sine of theta n3 sine three is gonna be n4 sine of theta four. So these guys are all connected. So what I mean, so now we can write Snell's law continuously across boundaries. And what I mean by that is that I could now go, okay, so I have N1 equal to sine theta one, but that's of course, that's the first boundary between one and two. But then there's the second boundary between two and three, but now this also has to be the same as the one between two and three and so forth. I could say it's the same for boundary between three and four. So when I connect these all together, I don't care about theta two because I'd have to calculate that. I don't care about theta three because I, I'd have to calculate that. So now we can solve for theta four without solving theta two and theta three. So now let's solve for theta four. So according to Snell's law, all I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna solve for theta four. So if I look at that, then this tells me that I have N1 sine of theta one is the same as N4 sine of theta four. Now I'm gonna solve for theta four. So if I do that, then using the same process that I did on the previous example, this will then be N1 sine of theta one divided by N4. Then I just gotta put in my values. So look at theta one, I mean, excuse me, N1 is 1.3, N4 is 1.45. So if I now put these values in, here's what I get. I have the sine inverse, and then I'm gonna get 1.30 sine of 40.1 divided by 1.45. And when I compute that, I get 30. 5.3 degrees, and that's theta 4.